So welcome everybody to Office Hours. It is July 1st and we are going to talk about SEO today. So we have one question from someone named Lavanya. <laughs> <laughs> and uh but i just want to get everybody's temperature everybody's temperature to see how everybody's feeling about the process as a whole so far any big picture questions getting there it's a lot of information <laughs> it is. um i'm uh i definitely want to at some point today if we can talk about i'm starting like the uh keyword kind of brainstorming mm -hmm process and i think i'm getting the hang of it but yeah. then i, I kind of want to make sure that i'm on the right track as far as that goes well, we will add that to the list um, i'm always looking for input so if you feel that it's too overwhelming or could be broken into smaller pieces please tell me and i would i would love to improve it for making it easier for you okay um the best way to do that is at the bottom, there's like a, a com it's like a comment bar, leave a response. If you make a comment in there, I know exactly to which process you're referring. Okay. And it'll just, just tells me, hey, here, this, this step is a little unclear. Could you elaborate? Or this, this is all very long, can you break this up? Those would be really helpful for me. Okay. I, I know what I mean. <laughs> but 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 you can't read my mind and so that might not be a bad thing but anyway i want to make this more useful for you so levon you asked a specific question about one of the processes about entering your host name under the sessions by host name and yes. I, I believe you're referring to the seo dashboard step I, yeah, I was on that, and um, it said enter your domain name. I think it said, but I had entered in my my website. Oh, that's why I asked. Was I supposed to do that? Yeah. So that's a really good question, um, and I think I emailed you the incorrect information. So why don't we try to replicate this process and see if we can do this together? I'm going to share the screen. And then I'm going to go and log into Google Analytics. I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen because I don't know which client this is going to go up to. And I don't want to share client information. I don't have permission. So let me just log in and show my own account. Yeah, can't show you that. But I can show you mine. So it is logging in to, all right, so now I'm gonna share my screen again. Okay, so from here, uh, we are trying to get to the dashboard, which after you've installed it, which we we troubleshot and figured out it was my fault. I gave the incorrect link, but the correct link is now in the process. We go to dashboards, uh, weekly troubleshooting dashboard is what I call it on my site. And under sessions by host name, is the dashboard item on the far left bottom. So what this data point is trying to show us is which websites have our Google Analytics code on them. Um, why that's important. Sometimes, first of all, um, sometimes we'll uh, enable certain tools or uses to use our Google Analytics code, they'll invite us to it. For instance, MailChimp might do it. Uh, YouTube might invite us to share our Google Analytics code on their site. Um, that's a useful service, but it can cloud our data. And so what we want to know when we're doing an SEO campaign is to which website the traffic is going. This is also helpful if, for instance, your website runs what's called a subdomain, you know, most of our websites, pardon me, 
run off triple w www.whatever.com or they'll skip the www but sometimes we'll set up a website that's blog.ourwebsite.com and we need to make sure we're reporting traffic according to the domain name that it sits on and this this why i put this in the dashboard is to help us make sure that most of the traffic that we're talking about is on our main website and to identify if there's any weird problems. So you can see in the last week, all the traffic, all 36 sessions, and I know it's all the traffic because I can compare the sessions by host name to the overall sessions in the upper right hand, upper left hand corner are 36. So that means all the traffic was on www.reliableacorn.com. So I know that everything's wor working as it should. Um, if I had a blog.reliableacorn.com, I should see some of that under blog.reliableacorn.com. But knowing that how much of that traffic going to the blog and how much is not might affect how I set up my analytics account or something like that. Another thing you might see under host name is what they call referral spam. Um, I don't know how experienced you two are with Google Analytics, but sometimes if you go in, you might see these weird like websites that look like they're sending your site traffic. Have you ever experienced that? I don't think so. Yeah, it, that is someone who is trying to make it look like you're getting traffic from a website, but you're not really getting traffic from that website. They're trying to make you click and look in their website by inserting information into your Google Analytics account. They're not hacked you, though it's everything safe. They're just trying to trick you. And so you also see that here. So this will also tell you if there's a problem with people inserting data that's not true. So Lavonia's question is, do we need to enter our sessions uh, by our domain under the sessions by host name? Yeah, like I put my actual website name there. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So the answer is, and what I've done here is I haven't done that. Where would, where would you have entered it, Lavonia? <laughs> Scroll down. I don't know. I, okay. I saw where it said, um, it might have been, it was blank and it said domain goes here. That could have been it. Oh, okay. Um, huh. I wonder, I wonder if I'm using, uh, I'm sent to an old version of this. So I, what, what I emailed your answer and what I'm going to go back and stick with is the idea that you shouldn't have to change your session, any, enter in your domain name into this widget because what you want to know is all the domain names that are showing up for each of the host names. So this okay. will help you determine whether or not uh, you have any problems with your Google Analytics code. It might have been under this add a filter. So if we could, if we wanted to limit this to a particular, we could then say host dome containing. And that would then filter all this data to only show host names with reliable acorn.com in them. But because I like to use this to troubleshoot problems, I, I'm gonna recommend you not change that and just leave it so it shows you all the different host names. Let me see if I can. Okay, so I need to go in and remove that. Yeah, let me just see if something. I'm gonna extend my data out really far and see if I can show other host names. Ah, okay. So here you see a couple of it, things under the host name. And this is why this is really helpful. Over since January 24th of 2019 through June 30th of 2020, yesterday, most of my visits came to reliableacorn.com, not www.reliableacorn.com. So what that tells me is until recently, and the reason I know it's recent is because the last week data was all triple W. 
I was running ReliableAcorn.com, not www.ReliableAcorn.com. It wasn't until recently where I converted my website to use the triple W's. So this would be helpful if I didn't control my own website and I noticed someone made that change for me. This is where I would find out, oh my gosh, now we're running on triple W. Um, it's, it doesn't really matter whether you run on triple W or not, but what matters is you pick one and you stick with it. And if you need to change it, you need to set up a redirect to get to the proper one. Now, um, I know I did this with my site. So I know that I set up the redirect to handle properly. So if you view ReliableAcorn.com page, it will automatically send you to the equivalent page on www.ReliableAcorn.com. What would be a problem is if I had, you could access any page from either ReliableAcorn.com or www.ReliableAcorn.com. That would be a duplicate content problem because there's two different websites for which you can see the same content. If that were the case, then I'd need to set up a redirect to make sure that any time someone requested one or the other version of the domain name of the host name, it would send it to one. So everybody would have the same domain name experience. Um, so that's another value of, of keeping an eye on your host name in case something goes off. But to answer your question, you shouldn't need to change anything. I will review the documentation to make sure it reflects that. I think I was just um, after, I forgot when I put it in. Was I looking at the, I can't remember why I put it in. If it was during the video or just because I saw it was there. I think I put it in after you sent me that link. Okay. And it was, um, but I don't, I'm not, I don't recall if it's in the instructions. I just saw okay. domain here. It could, it could be like, uh, make sure you name your dashboard to put your domain, domain name in it. Okay. Because that way, if you're getting, if you're managing multiple websites and you set this up as an email, you, it will tell you which website it's associated with. And that way, you know which email is related to each, which website. So for instance, every week I have Google send me a dashboard to every one of the, my client's sites. And I have it set to compare week to week. So let's just go back to that so you can kind of see what I might see week to week. Yeah, I got the PDF version of it um, Monday. So I was like, uh, must be set up right. Yeah, exactly. PDF Great. <laughs> And, and, and now you can kind of start to see. So for instance, if I look at this for week to week, oh, my traffic is down a little bit. I still got, you know, one conversion over the last week. So, okay, no, nothing big changes. One 404 error that was, seems to have been fixed, or at least I didn't get a visitor to that. No weird session things. Here are my top pages in which uh, in the, uh, produced, you know, uh, leads. So I got two contacts for SEO services. That's, that's nice. Um, and then things like that. So this is the dashboard I will get for myself every week. And it allows me to go through and say, okay, anything weird, anything broken, anything terrible, fix it. Everything looks okay. Move on to the next one. And it helps me manage a lot of different clients at once. Um, so to get back to this particular site, do I have, well, not this one, the, um, that, oh, this is a dashboard. Do mm -hmm. I have to keep doing the thing to select for it to be weekly and to, and select my um, all web, all website data information? Because I had to click on that again. I, I'm sorry, could you ask that again? Like the link you sent me um, yeah. on Friday? Yeah. Do I have to keep clicking on that? And then when I click on it, I still have to go in and select weekly SEO. Well, I think I well, I think I followed you through. Yeah, I followed you through that on on the uh, on the uh, training. Um, and then at the top, select my uh, like you have all website data. That's what I have too. 
Yep. So do I have to go in and select that each time, or it and it won't, or will it? Is, or is it supposed to open with all my data already in it? So when you click the like link, you when you click the link, it'll ask you to which Google Analytics account you want to apply this dashboard. Oh, okay. So if you, if let's say you manage 10 different websites, you will need to click that link 10 times and then tell Google Analytics each analytics profile you want it to create one of these dashboards for. But once you create it, it will only show data for that dashboard in that account. Okay. And it okay, should so always do all users by default. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we'll have to go through that each time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I think it, what you'll find is it saves time because it's, first of all, we all wish we could look in Google Analytics every week, but we never have time to do it. And this way, at least you get an email. So it kind of nags me <laughs> to do it. But also, uh, yeah, uh, if, I ha if I find something weird, I can always delve into and look and see what's wrong and figure out the problem. But most of the time, everything's running fine and it's just a reassuring thing. So that is the dashboard. Yeah, I'm gonna go through that part again because I, I don't remember how I got there, but I didn't put the www in front of mine. Yeah, I just put my website.com. Okay. Um, but I'll go through it again. I don't remember okay. how I got there. Cool. Cool. Well, I, I hope it's helpful. Yeah, it was. Okay, good. Good. Well, Ali, you, you had some questions about keyword research? Yeah. Um, so I started doing like a spreadsheet for it. Um, and I just want to make sure I'm on the right track of yeah. how I'm doing it. Um, well, you know, one of the things with Cambridge Research is it, it's great to ask other people. So maybe Lavanya and I can look at your list and help you brainstorm. Yeah. Uh, you might share in your screen. Sure. Let me see if I can allow you. Yeah. Okay, you sh I think you can, can you? Uh, it says host disabled attendee screen oh, What a terrible rude. Okay, there you go, try it now. There we go, okay. Um, okay. So this is, what I kind of have been working on dividing like each page that I want to direct traffic towards. Okay. Um, so our main page, parent resources, and then working on blogs right now. Does this look like how it should look or? So before we start this, give us the really quick introduction to what your business does. Sure. Um, so we provide um, ABA therapy, which is also called applied behavior analysis for individuals with autism. So we um, provide services for kids in home, in school, social skills, adults, advocacy, a lot of different um, facets of that. But the main thing is that it's ABA therapy for individuals with autism. Okay. Okay. So, um, so it, it sounds to me, if I'm reading this list, your main page Mm -hmm. could focus on things like if someone was searching for ABA service company, mm -hmm. you, you have services, yeah, plural, but what a best practice when you're doing this is to put the plural in the singular. Oh, so okay. services and then service. So I would add services because for instance, just grammatically, mm -hmm. we wouldn't say ABA services company. Or maybe we would, right? But. Right, okay. Yeah, so I like to do the plurals and singulars both in there. Uh, as you put this later into the tool to determine the data, mm -hmm. Google will help you by saying, by lumping them together. Mm -hmm. But okay. um, yeah, so ABA service company, ABA service provider, ABA service meaning, ABA service for autism, ABA service examples, 
So th that from what I'm seeing on this list, those are the, the, do those describe the services you provide? Yeah, and that's what I was trying to do, take keywords both from our own website and then kind of plugging in those main words into a Google search and seeing what people were searching for. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. And then like interchanging the, like the descriptor, you know, yeah. and with the different service and then the, the kind of end of it. Um, mm -hmm. okay. I, so I think you're, you, got, you got a really great start. There are a couple of tips I would give you. Okay. So... You, you, this is a little dicey because you guys provide therapy services. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't mean to sound mean when I say the following, mm -hmm. you want to help people, but you're helping people in order to make money. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, and that's the truth, right? You, you, in the more money you make, the more you can help people, right? Like, yeah. so we don't feel bad about making money, but, but when we're looking for searches, we have to consider what's called user intent. Mm -hmm. So, someone who searches for ABA service provider, they're looking for someone who can provide a service. Right. And presum presumably, they're going to pay for that service. Right. So that intent on that keyword is really strong as far as becoming a customer. Mm -hmm. ABA service meaning could be someone saying, hey, I've heard this thing called ABA. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's even for me, but what does it even mean? Okay. The keyword intent on that is low because someone isn't necessarily ready to become a customer. Okay. So if you were to rank for ABA service meaning, right. that first of all would be very hard because there's probably a lot of websites that talk about the meaning of it. Right. But, but it's also someone who is a looky-loo who's curious Maybe possibly one day they could become a customer or mm -hmm. client, but, but it's not directly going to become a customer. So, so meaning would be probably a better for a blog post. Mm -hmm. Okay. Than it would be for a main kind of service page where Question. you're huh. trying to say, hey, by the way, we're an ABA service provider. We can help you. If you're at that point, you already know what the meaning is. So it might not be the place, but, but even if you were to rank for that on that service page, it wouldn't help your business. Right. It just, it, it would get a lot of, if, if, even if you were ranked for it, it would provide a lot of traffic, but that traffic wouldn't become customers. Yeah. I see what I, you're saying is to focus on the intent of each page. So something like the blog page, we might not be targeting converting into clients, we're getting them interested in the company and the resources first. Right. So ABA for um, kids or children? Yeah. Okay. You might want to add children on there because you might have somebody that has a pet peeve like my grandmother. <laughs> she doesn't believe in saying kids because kids is like a baby goat. <laughs> so. I hate when people say kiddos. It drives me crazy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I've gotten yelled at for saying kids. On there. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Um, so yeah, so that might make a good blog post because the blog posts later, as you go through the process, you'll find the blog posts are all about supporting the service pages. So a, a blog post talking about the meaning of an ABA service could be really nice, but it's not a thing that's going to become a customer. They're still in that consideration thing. So uh, I was, marketing parlance, we talk about what's called a funnel, which is at the top of the funnel, we had a wad of a large group of people because there's a lot of people who are like, don't really know. They're doing some investigation. They're trying to understand what they need. You know, uh, someone might search for autism mm -hmm. in light of that. They, they, their child just recently got diagnosed. They're trying to learn more, right? Maybe right. it's not their child. Maybe a grandchild got diagnosed. Maybe okay. their new neighbor has autism and they're searching for autism to learn more. Mm -hmm. So there's so many people who could learn, search for a very broad phrase mm -hmm. that not all those people even potentially could be your customer. Right. Right. If I'm a neighbor of an, an autistic family, a child with a family with an autistic child, I'm not going to hire you. I'm just kind of trying to understand so I can be a good neighbor and understanding right. and helpful. So that's called a, a high in the funnel 
kind of search mm -hmm. because it's very broad and informational. But what we want to do is we want to be as focused as we can with still finding enough people searching for it. So for instance, you know, ABA service is a little more specific, mm -hmm. but it's still pretty broad because it doesn't necessarily mean someone wants to hire someone. Mm -hmm. Right. That's why I like provider or company. Right. Right. Because now it's starting to get to, mm -hmm. I want to pay money for this. Right. Right. Now, so that's, that's one way to think of this is, is to really kind of uh, divide your words into, Hey, these are broad kind of things right. that are informational in nature. Maybe they're even more specific, but still pretty informational. But for our core like landing pages that really pr promote the services we provide, we want to really have a good focus of keywords that are, are the keywords that will produce income. Right. Would the symptoms um, be one of them, like symptoms of autism? Um, not Is that for, specific? Or? Yeah, no, I mean, not for us because oh, okay. we don't do um, diagnosing, you know, you oh, would okay. come to us after the diagnosis. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's a great, that's a great observation, great question, and, then, and you handle the, that's exactly the right answer, right? Because, now you might have a blog post to talk about symptoms of autism, mm -hmm. right? But that's not something that would be necessarily Driving related traffic, to yeah for our yeah our oh, okay. particular service yeah so yeah. and I think like the so the easiest starting point for me with SEO right now is our blog because we do post at least weekly um, usually multiple times a week and where we've been failing with that is our SEO is not consistent like our keywords are blog specific rather than tying the whole website back to that blog. So would you recommend there being a key phrase that we use on every single blog post and then adding a descriptor to it that is specific to that blog or? Okay, that's a really great question. Um, then part of the process is it, there is a step called build an SEO blueprint. Okay. And what it's trying to encourage you to do is say, for these topics, we're focusing this page. Right. But for these topics, we're focusing that page. Mm -hmm. And we're focusing another idea, a set of topics on this page and so forth. Mm -hmm. So what's important is to have a focus page for every idea, not keyword, idea. Mm -hmm. So an ABA service company is probably the same thing as an ABA service provider. Right. So we wouldn't want two pages, one on ABA service company and one on ABCA mm -hmm. service provider because it's the same thing. Yeah. It's two different ways of referring. And we might want to include on that page, you know, we, as an ABA service company, we provide all kinds of services. You know, we want to include these ideas, multiple mm -hmm. keywords on one page. We don't want to have so focused that every page is one and one only keyword. Right. Each page is a topic. And the SEO blueprint step helps you say, here's our keywords, What? where do we focus? Okay. And so what we end up doing is saying, Here, here's our map. We will identify things like Oh, we don't have a page talking about this topic yet. We should write one. Or I'm writing a blog post and I'm talking about the services to which page should I link from that blog post? Because you have, you know, which page you're focusing on for that service. So that blueprint step is a really important part of this because it helps you break it out and start to have each page focused. You'll start to identify pay, you know, topics that you haven't talked about yet. You start to know, uh, remember what you've already started talking about. So you don't say the same thing again. Right. Right. So I'd recommend reviewing that 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 process, the SEO blueprint process, mm -hmm. so you can start to focus on there. Yeah, I, I started watching that one and I was like, I should probably do the keyword thing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because, because until you know what people are searching for, you don't know. what. And th that was the second point I was going to make about this. 
when I, when I do keyword research, I don't recommend you say, I'm going to do focus on a page for the keyword research. I'm going to focus on the all the universe of all the possible things someone could search for, for my company. And then I'm going to take all those, divide them into units in groups that are similar. And then say, okay, great. This page gets focused on this topic. Another page gets focused on that topic. So for I instance, see. so rather than do this, the parent resources, basically bring this over here for the parent and do it within, you know, like a split off of that here. Right. And if there are multiples, you know, groups would apply to parent training, would apply to social skills, would apply to whatever, you know, do that in each section, basically. Right. You're saying. So for exa example, advocacy as a service is very different than services you provide for treatment options. Right. So you'll probably want an advocacy page mm -hmm. that talks about ad advocacy using the phrases that people would want to search, which is what you're trying to figure out. And so do the research, find out how people are searching for these topics and then divide them out. And then you know which pages to build, mm -hmm. which pages that already exist that you should tweak. And, and maybe you'll find some pages you've built that aren't really SEO pages. So it doesn't mean you shouldn't have them. For instance, let's say, let's say you do the research and there's not a lot of people searching for uh, parent training for people with autism. Let's just say that. I don't know. We'll, we'll right. find out in the keyword research process. Well, that doesn't mean you don't need that page in your site. Mm -hmm. It just means SEO isn't the way to grow that page. Right. So for instance, having that page on your site, someone comes in to your site because they're searching for autism services. Right. They see there's a page about parent training and they're like, ding, I never even thought right. that I could use and benefit from parental training to deal with my autistic child. Yeah. They didn't know to search for that, but by coming to your site, now you've exposed them to the fact that this is an offering that you have and now you've done. So the whole keyword research process is about finding a big long list of all the possible and then dividing it out. Yeah, because I think I was, you know, my gut instinct was to do the reverse, was to put what we have out there when really you want to drive what people are searching for in broad terms and bring them in and then show them what we have specifically. Right. Is that accurate? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and there, there's a later process, just to be a little confusing, where it's like, how do you do keyword research for a specific page? Mm -hmm. But that's assuming you've done the big universe. Okay. And then, then, then it's like, okay, so we know we need a page for ABA service company. And we know that we're probably going to talk about uh, ABA service provider uh -huh. and, and ABA, I don't know. You'll, you'll figure out what the words you should use is. Yeah. But then you take, once you kind of have an idea, then you take the step of doing research for that focused page, which kind of really helps you focus in. Okay. So that will, for instance, help you determine, are there any questions I need to ask and answer on my page as mm -hmm. someone considers hiring my company for ABA services? Right. Okay. Um, so for instance, you have what is on there. Uh-huh. Right. So that, that's a very common question. Uh, all the interrogatives, who, what, where, when, not, why, how, should, could, does, will. But as part of the keyword research process, especially the specific page process explains how to find the questions people ask. Because Google really likes it when your content is helpful. Mm. And that means you're addressing things that people really, really want to, to know. So before they hire an ABA service company, they might have some questions like, what can an ABA service company do for my child? And hopefully that specific page keyword research process helps you identify questions like that, that you can then incorporate into your content. Because eventually you're gonna to need to write 800 words on each one of these pages. And that's tough. But if you have kind of these questions that people are asking, suddenly you're like, I got more content than I need. And then, then you go and you have blog posts and then it becomes real easy. 
and the whole thing is to thread this language into the existing. Right. Okay. And, and each page has a focus, a clear focus. Okay. You know, you don't want to have a main page focusing on ABA service company and then a blog post focusing on ABA service company. Right. You need to have, and that's what the blueprint will help you determine. Interesting. Okay. It's very educational. Well, are you saying that she should have pages like if she has a parent resource page, she can put like um, some blog posts up under the parent resource page about parent resources? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, on your parent resource page, you might have some blog posts you've written for parents. Yeah, we do have. Um, I can actually show you. So it's like resources, parent resources, blogs. So like. Yeah, we, we do have a pretty good flow of how oh, that, yeah. um, and then even just in main parent resources, it links out to all the other things that we have. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of my thought process when I was separating this, and now I'm realizing, like, don't do that quite yet. <laughs> um, you get in the cart ahead of the horse. I mean, you're, you're thinking about it right. Uh -huh. You just get in the cart ahead of the horse a little bit, and it, I think you will find it a little easier. Mm -hmm if you do the big thing and then divide it out. Yeah. But Lavani brings up a really, really good point where the blog becomes a resource, mm -hmm. but also the blog are landing page on themselves that then point mm -hmm. you back. So right. when we talk about link building, which is later on in the process, it's important that we have links from other websites to ours. Right. But it's just as important to have links to, with, within to our own pages. Yes. So, whereas if we're talking about other sites, we don't want to trade links back and forth between two different websites. That's what's called reciprocal linking, and it's against Google's rules. However, we can reciprocal link within our own website all we want, mm -hmm. right? And so if you have a resource for parent resources page, you should link to your blog posts about that so that they can benefit. But each one of those blog posts should also link to your parent resource page because some people are going to land on your blog post. Interesting. Right? The major, what you'll find with a successful SEO campaign is that, yeah, a lot of people are going to land on your homepage and that's how you're going to start. But if you have a focused topic on each of these pages, people will start landing on those pages first. Mm -hmm. And that becomes the introduction to your company. So we want to then get them to the page mm -hmm. that is, here's the cell. This is why you need to hire us for ABA treatment. Right. Or, and that's where we're failing right now because we do the blogs, but we're not linking it back to the main page. So they read the blog and then unless they take it upon themselves, to pursue more info, we're not redirecting back to the, okay, now hire us. I see exactly what yeah. you're saying. And it makes exactly. And, and now we all, we should all be realistic about the fact that our blogs are always going to get more traffic in, in, uh, and for people who aren't ready to convert because the blog is higher in the funnel. Yeah. Right. Support for parents of special needs children. Yeah. It's very, very broad. Does that mean that was a wasted blog post? No, absolutely not. That's a great blog post. But it, we also realize that not everyone who finds this will need to hire Grain Behavior Services. Right. Now, go back to your keyword list, and there's one other thing I need to point out to you. So you're in central New Jersey, right? Yes. Can you help somebody who's living in Charlotte, North Carolina? Right. Yeah. yeah. So don't forget to explicitly state yeah. where you are. That could be a town near you. You know, how, how do customers potentially refer to your area by county, right. by central New Jersey, by New Jersey? You're like, mm -hmm. so it, if you were to rank for ABA service provider and someone in LA were to find you, you might not be able to help them. Right. So let's be specific. First of all, so you can actually connect with your real customers. Second of all, so that the people visiting your website are relevant right. to you. Right. You, you help. So 
So, and then when you get to the data collection process, you might find that people aren't, not enough people are searching for New Jersey MBA service. That's okay. Still describe it in terms of New Jersey, but just take the word New Jersey out as you collect data so that you can see which phrase people search for more. Right. But always talk, and the more you can relate it to your local area, especially if you're limited to your area, the better. Now, when you were talking last week about like the near me, is you said that's like an auto function. So if we're talking about our location, Google will auto populate that when somebody searches near me. Mm -hmm. okay. So if I did ABA services near me, I would come up with York, South Carolina search right. results okay. because I live in York County, South Carolina. It might give me some in Charlotte because I'm just right across the state line from Charlotte. But it, it Google's smart enough to know that near me means I want someone geographically close to me and it knows where you are because Google knows everything, right? Right. And so it says it's going to fill in the blanks. So if you make sure and say New Jersey, central New Jersey, the county, nearby towns in your content, then Google will put it together. And it's interesting because honestly, I think this right here is quite possibly the only place on our website that specifies New Jersey. Yep. And really as, more than that. Yeah. As you get into the optimization, notice so that you have a tab open. Mm -hmm. It says autism therapy in central New Jersey, the very top of your tab. Yeah. That's the title tag. Mm -hmm. That's the most important SEO on page ranking factor. Okay. And that mentions New Jersey. That's good. So, so that is there to help connect. Now you probably need to incorporate it more in your content, mm -hmm. right? Just to make sure. And, and I would, New Jersey is very broad. So uh, anything you can see about counties, or nearby towns, mm -hmm. school districts, will always help make Google make that connection to what near me means for you. Right. Because near me in New Jersey could be no, you know, Philly to New York City. Yeah. Right. And, and, and you might not be able to help someone all the way out. Yeah. There. We, yeah. We are broad, but not all encompassing. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Well, we're running out of time. So I want to make sure if, are there any other questions that we can talk about today? Um, no. For me, that's a lot of food for thought. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for your time. Don't hesitate to ask questions. The form is a great way if you can think of a question so I can come prepared to this. Okay. Um, that helps me a lot. But, uh, you know, and if, you, if you're in a, in a specific process, feel free to fill out the, you know, leave a comment if there's something you're noticing weird or on Claire, or if you just want to ask a question there, go ahead and ask it there too. But um, I'm, I so look forward to our office hours. Thank you too for coming. It's, it's a good Thank time. You. Thank and you. Uh, I hope you all take care. Thanks. All right, we'll see Bye. you soon. Have a good Bye. holiday weekend, Bye. guys. Thank you. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.